Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of All the Mod 7. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a pretty good day, still a little sick, but uh, hopefully getting over it soon. Um, I did some work between episodes, a little bit of grinding. So first of all, I made a basic fluid tank, and these are super easy to make. Uh, it's just iron ingots and redstone dust, and that'll make a tank that stores uh, 32 buckets of stuff. So I stored 32 buckets of lava in here, and then I also did some grinding to get sand, gravel, and clay to make grout, which if you know anything about Tinker's Construct is going to be very, very useful for us. So uh, one clay block, four sand blocks, four gravel blocks will make eight grout. Those can then be smelted into seared bricks, which are used for making smelteries uh, for Tinker's Construct. So we're gonna take uh, advantage of that today. And also, uh, I took on another roguelike dungeon. So, World Spawn is like right over here somewhere. We set up right here. This is where that witch's hut is. And as I was kind of out exploring, I found another roguelike dungeon right here. Uh, and I took that on and we got, you know, I got some decent loot. We got uh, a little bit of diamond gear. We got a diamond shovel, diamond sword. Uh, found some other goodies, couple of diamonds. Nothing like super insanely ridiculous. I didn't find like an angel ring in a chest or anything like that, but uh, all in all, pretty useful. I've been doing some thinking about Hexerai, which is why we moved to this witch hut here. And the stuff that I want to do is going to require us to go to the nether first, and I kind of have some other things that I want to do as well. So I think we're going to kind of hold off on the Hexerai stuff for now until we find uh, a more permanent location to live, because this is not it. Uh, <laughs> I really don't want to live here. So I think what I'm going to do, now that I've got a bunch of backpacks, and I've got a bunch of other loot and stuff, and I've gotten all the clay and things like that that I'm going to need, I think I'm basically just going to strip this place down. Uh, I'm just going to take all of this stuff with me. I'll just bring it all. And then, um, you know, we'll be able to make use of it when we, wherever we end up, wherever the new base is. And I think between four golden backpacks plus my normal inventory space, I should have enough space to actually support that uh, and take all of these things with me. So that's the plan. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, and then once I've done that, I'm going to go head out into the world and try to find a good spot to live. So I'll catch up with you there. I think I found a pretty good spot. So up here was the witch's house. And we kind of, I kind of went down this way and right over here, we've got kind of this nice sort of flat area. There's uh, a lava pool just over there, which will be good for our smeltery and stuff like that that we need lava for. There's water, there's uh, these orchards, lots of space to build. Uh, and the grass is relatively green. Like, I'm pretty happy with it. So I came over here. I did establish a mine. Nothing fancy, just a regular old branch mine. Did some mining. And uh, I've got a fair amount of resources now. So, you know, we're good. What I really was looking for was this. This is Osmium. Now, uh, in Tinker's Construct, which is what we're going to be setting up momentarily, when you set up a smeltery... It used to be in old versions of Tinker's Construct that you could use that to double your ores. So you would put, you know, one raw iron ore in and you would get two iron ingots out of it. That's not the case anymore. Uh, the smeltery does increase your output, but I think it only increases it by 30%. So you put in like three ore and you get four ingots, which is, it's fine, but it's... We can do better. Let's put it that way. So the way that we're going to do that is with Mechanism. And this is a tech mod. This is uh, one of several tech mods in this mod pack, and it's pretty great. Like, this is just a super solid tech mod. Kind of does everything you want it to do. Uh, and what we need is a basic crushing factory and a crusher. Uh, so what this will do is crush ores, so we put in uh, like one iron 
ore chunk, and it will spit out two iron dust, which can then each be smelted into an ingot. So it'll allow us to double our ores. But the first thing we're going to need in order to actually do this is we're going to need power, and we're going to need a metallurgic infuser. So let's do this. Uh, let me get all the stuff that I need all smelted up and ready to go, and then we'll get some of this stuff assembled. Okay, so I went ahead and I made a metallurgic infuser, and then I also went and made a heat generator, which is, again, pretty easy. Osmium, iron, a couple planks, a furnace, and some copper. And this generates power for us using uh, lava, essentially. Or you can also put in, like, coal, and it will convert it into lava. But by far the easiest way to do this is to just throw in some lava this way and it will generate power, as you can see. Uh, now, we may also want to do a battery at some point, but for now, we'll just put in... Uh, where is my redstone? Here we go. That'll work. We are <laughs> whew, already out of power, huh? Okay, well, this might take a little bit longer than I thought. Let's put in four buckets worth. And if this is going to be our long-term power thing, then we're most definitely going to need more. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We'll have to find a way to uh, increase this a bit. We're okay for now. I don't need, like, stupid amounts of lava, but this is the big thing that we needed right here. Two basic control circuits because those are used for making pretty much everything within mechanism. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is lava itself is not that hard to generate. Like, you can create it uh, by mixing things or doing, you know, you can squeeze lava out of blaze, but, like, there's ways to make lava to actually produce it. But by far the easiest way is to just get it from the nether, where there's infinite lava, essentially. And the way that we can do that is by using a pump right here, an electric pump, and then also uh, a way to get it through dimensions with an ender tank. And you can see this isn't that hard to make either, assuming we can get to the nether and we can find some blazes. So if we set this up right, we should be able to essentially give ourselves infinite lava and we'll be good to go. Um, but now that we have our basic control circuits, the next thing we need to worry about in order to make our crusher, which is right here, uh, we're going to also need steel casings, which means that we need some steel. And there's a few ways we can get this. The big thing we need is steel dust. And the easiest way to craft this is with an ore hammer. Uh, or you can actually use the metallurgic infuser as well, but given the power situation right now, I think we'll just do it the other way. So looking at ore hammers, we can make an iron one with two iron blocks, or we can make a bronze one as well. And it's probably easier to do the bronze one, since we can make uh, bronze very easily in a smeltery. So let's go ahead and get some things here. Where is my glass? There we go. So now if we're looking at tinkers, we need a seared heater, like so. And then we also need, oh, wait, we need a seared melter and a seared heater. These are essentially, uh, this is a change. I, I don't know when this changed with Tinkers. It used to, you didn't, I don't know when these were added. I honestly don't really like it because you end up using, like, the idea is that this is supposed to be your first smeltery, essentially. But really, you don't end up, using them <laughs> like you use it once and then you never have to use it again and it just kind of exists which i'm not a huge fan of so what we can do is throw that in there and what we're trying to make is a smeltery 
controller. And you do that by putting in four copper ingots and then pouring the molten copper over some seared bricks, which we have put in there. So as I said earlier, we do get a little bit of extra uh, if we put in three of those. And then we'll just toss one piece of coal in here. We, you'll see that this stuff will melt down. And then this will give us our smeltery controller. Uh, also, I'm going to need at least one more of those. So let's get that going. There's our four ingots. Pour that over this. And smeltery controller. Beautiful. So now the other things we're going to need... Let's just look at seared stuff. Uh, I'm going to need a couple of these seared fuel tanks. Is that is that the right one? Yes. We're going to need, I think, two of these. That's where we'll put our lava. We're going to need a couple of these so that we can make some drains. And then we just got to figure out where we're going to put this thing. And I think for now, I'm just going to put it over here. And we should be able to do... Um, let's actually go out here. We'll make a 5x5 five five smeltery, which is pretty big. Like, that's that's honestly a relatively large smeltery compared to what you would normally start with, but I wanted to make sure when I was building, when I was gathering all the resources that I would essentially be set to make a relatively large smeltery right off the bat. What is, I, I, I hear an angry thing, but I don't know where it is. It's fine though, not a big deal. So we put down our controller, we'll put down our two tanks, and then we're going to put down two drains here and here. We can break this. And then also we need one of these guys, like so. Is that how I want to do this? How many more copper ingots would I need? Uh, let's see, eight, I think. Right, because we would need to, yes, I would need eight more copper ingots in order to do three. So let's just smelt those up as well. And then make a few more of these guys. And I think what we're going to do is right here, these little bits. I'm just going to change this up. And we'll have those guys over there instead. And then, let's see, we're going to need one more set of these as well. Grab you, we can just break these because these are useless now, we don't need them. And then essentially, we'll end up having two sides that each have things on them. So this side, for example, we'll do our casting tables like that. And then the side over there on this end, we'll do casting basins. So let's make two more of those. And there we go. Okay. Can put these here. And that should now be a functional smeltery. And all we need to do is put stuff in it. And we should have enough seared bricks that we can actually bring it up a level as well. Or at least very close. I think I'll have to make like two. But that's easy enough. No, I actually have enough. There we go. 
All right, so now we've got a pretty large smelter, as you can see. Tons of room for smelting stuff down, if we feel so inclined, which is wonderful. And we'll just grab you. Fill this up. Each of these two tanks can hold four buckets of lava. So we'll just get that up all the way. And now it's looking pretty good. So we got our lava all sorted out and we want to make a bronze hammer. So the way that you make bronze is with tin and copper. And what we can do is go like so and like so. It's a three to one ratio. So then once this all smelts up, it will combine into an alloy. There we go. Excuse me? Why, why did you not? Hmm. Is it not a three to one ratio? I could have sworn it was. No, it's three to one. So why did that not combine evenly? I don't know, whatever, it's fine. Uh, I will mess with it and fix it at a later time. It's not a big deal. So this will get us our bronze. There we go. And then we can just take a couple of sticks, although I'm gonna need a few more. There we go and make ourselves an ore hammer. And now we can make steel dust by combining one iron dust with four coal. And iron dust, you can just do this. So there we go. And then we go one, two, three, four. Go into here. And that gives us our four steel dust, which we can then cook up into steel ingots and use to make all of our mechanism machines and things like that. So pretty cool. Uh, the other thing that I think we really need to do is get into the nether because there is obviously a lot of stuff that we're going to want from there. And I think, I, I mean, I already gathered the obsidian from that lava pool over there. I think I'll just put the portal, I don't know, down here or something. It doesn't really matter that much. So I think here will be fine. There we go. And I'll light that and we'll be able to go into the nether because I'll need quartz and all sorts of other goodies as well. So I'm going to keep on the grind, see what I can get uh, taken care of, and I'll give you an update once I've got some progress to show you. Well, my friends, we are in the nether, and I I wanted to show you what I've set up here. So this is essentially our infinite lava source. It's not truly infinite, because technically it does actually consume these lava blocks as it sucks them up into the system, but realistically, it's pretty darn close to infinite because it's the nether. So, yeah. So the way that this works, we have an electric pump here from Mechanism that is being powered here by a heat generator with a universal cable in between. So this is like a power cable. And then coming up the top, we have mechanical pipes. And the mechanical pipe comes up from the pump, first goes into the heat generator that's powering it, and then anything left over goes into this ender tank right here. So essentially, the pump is powering itself through this heat generator, and then it is also sending whatever's left into this ender tank. And the ender tank allows us to transport that lava in between dimensions back to our main base, where it can then be used to generate power there. So, popping up over here, we'll just head back to our base real quick.
and you can see the setup over on this side. So here we've got the ender tank. And then from here, it is going into a basic fluid tank. This is just so that I can pick this up, take it with me, uh, grab a bucket out of it, stuff like that a little bit easier if I need to. Uh, and then from the basic fluid tank, it goes into this heat generator, which goes into an energy cube. This is essentially a battery. It allows me to store any excess power until it caps out at 4 million joules of power, which is a lot. <laughs> Uh, and then I can run whatever machines I want off of that. So that's kind of our basic power setup. Obviously, I did go into the nether. I did find a uh, nether fortress in there, so I was able to get some blaze rods and stuff like that. But I do want to correct something. I was thinking that the crusher would allow us to ore double. In fact, that is not the case. If we look at the crusher, uh, or actually better, let's just look at like osmium, raw osmium, right? If we throw this thing into a crusher, I don't think it actually even gives me the option to do so. There's the crusher from Immersive Engineering, but that's different. Uh, so I guess we could look at like a pulverizer, but you can see the pulverizer doesn't do it either. It just turns it into one single dust. So in order for us to actually double our ores, we would need to use a pulverizer on osmium ore, not osmium chunks. And at that point, you're probably better off just using Fortune 3 while you're mining. I mean, it's one thing if you're using like a quarry to mine for you, but if you're right, we're not at that point yet, and we're probably not going to be at that point for a while. So I think our much better option is Fortune 3. And the easiest way to do that is going to be to make some tools with Tinker's Construct. So the first thing you need to do is make all of these different casts. And the way that you do that is you put some gold in here so that it'll melt down. And then you go to your part builder. You take your patterns and you make parts, usually just using wood or cobblestone, whatever you've got. Uh, so you would take... You basically put a pattern, put it in some cobblestone, and choose, like, tool binding, and then it'll make a stone tool binding, or whatever. Then you take that stone tool binding, and you'd plop it into the casting table and pour gold over it, and that would make the tool binding gold cast. And that's what you can use to actually make the stuff from the smeltery. So, a few things we're going to want to make. I think I want to just start with a pickaxe. Let me just grab... A little bit of this, we'll just toss, um, oh, actually, no, 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 it's gold and copper for rose gold. Oh, not you. I didn't want to throw my backpack in there. Uh, and then also, while I was in the nether, I did also manage to get a little bit of raw cobalt as well. So we're going to need a tool binding, which we'll make out of rose gold, a pickaxe head, which we will make out of uh, this, and a tool handle, which I'm probably going to make out of cobalt as well, I think. I think that's probably the way to go. So tool binding, rose gold. The reason we want to use rose gold is because it will give us... Uh, an additional modifier slot, which is super, super, super useful. And, okay, that gave us four ingots, which is perfect. So let's just grab the tool handle and the pickaxe head. So we'll just go like so. And... Uh, do we? I mean, I mean, the pickaxe head for sure we want to do out of cobalt. Do we want to do the tool handle out of it as well? I mean, it would give us more durability. The other option would be to do it out of rose gold again, which would give us another modifier. I think we're just going to do it this way. There we go. And then we can put that stuff in here. And then we need an anvil. And the way that we do that, uh, we can just use bronze, I think, since we happen to have a bunch of it. 
We go like so. Uh, that seared bricks. Oh, one more. Looks like we need to sleep real quick. Come on. There we go. And we can use those four sear bricks and the three blocks. Oh. There we go. Like so, to make a tinker's anvil. Plop that guy over here, and this will allow us to actually make our tools. So we go cobalt, like so, and that will make us a cobalt pickaxe which has four upgrade slots. And then, since we have been saving our music discs, we can do this and give it an additional upgrade as well. So pretty dang useful. Now, we do also want to get fortune on this thing. And if we open up our encyclopedia of tinkering, we're looking for the luck modifier. And the way that you get this is two copper ingots and a corn flour with some lapis. So that's pretty easy. Nothing like ridiculously crazy there. Uh, so let's just go toss some raw copper into here. Actually, we only need three. And then we'll grab the other stuff we need, which was... Where's my... Ah, here we go. We need a corn flour. And then we need... Some... Lapis blocks. And... The copper that we're making right now. So we just go copper... And there we go. That gives us the copper we need. And now we can throw these on here. And now it has the luck one enchantment. But what we really want is luck three. Luck two is uh, gold and ender pearls. So again, not super hard. Do I have any gold nuggets? I totally do which will allow me to make one single golden carrot. This one's honestly in some ways easier than the first, if you ask me. But that gives us luck two. And then the final one is a little bit tricky. Rose gold, a name tag, a diamond. That's all easy enough, but we also need a rabbit's foot. And rabbit's foot's uh, not so easy. That's a little bit harder. So if you look at rabbit's foot, obviously you get them from rabbits. Uh, but the best way to do this is with severing. Find a tinker's, make a tinker's construct severing blade thingy, the cleaver right here, and use that to kill a rabbit or two and get uh, rabbit's foot that way. Because otherwise it's only a 10% drop. Uh, or a 10% drop chance, which is not very good. So yeah, that's kind of the plan. I'm just going to kind of work on the Tinker's stuff, get that all done between episodes. Uh, but for now, why we no have lava power here? Okay, I think the problem was chunk loading. So if we open up the map here, we can just force load these two chunks. Uh, or actually... I don't think we really need to force load two. Yeah, let's see, we're facing north right now. So yes, this should be fine. We should be able to just skip this one and only force load this one. And then it should be okay, I think. Let, you know what, what's the, was it F3B? F3G, there we go. Yeah, okay, so chunk border, we're within the chunk border, so we're good. Um, although eventually it is going to suck up all of this lava, but I think that's the problem is I just didn't have a, uh, I didn't have the chunks loaded. Uh, so now I've got that loaded and it should be good. So hopefully that'll fix it. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, guys, I think that is going to do it for today's episode. 
No. You you leave me alone. Oh, you're not friendly either. Oh, they're everywhere. Okay, yeah. You know what? We'll just leave these guys alone. We're, just, we're going home. Um, yeah, so that's going to do it for today's episode, guys. I'm going to do the Tinker's Construct. Uh, I'm going to get all the tools and stuff made between episodes. Uh, and I'll show them to you when we get back. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Link's in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.